Welcome back to Game Designers Play Games, where we play games and talk game design, and we are back with more Vagrant Story. We're fighting a, a, a wyvern. wyvern, although he's just called a dragon here. Oh no, so that is his type. Oh, okay. So this is going to be incredibly crucial and is basically the main point of the game as you play on. Hmm. But, so if you notice, I'm sh uh, changing that target. It says target, single, obviously it's single. E EGD is edge. I'm using an edge weapon. Uh, what kind of damage am I doing? Physical. Physical. And then finally, I'm affecting a dragon. Now, Jeez, do... I mean, how important is that? Incredibly. Game-changingly wow, okay. important. Every the single most one of important, those? every single one of them. The most important thing in the game. Whew. You could be a level one character and beat the final boss as long as you had the right stuff to beat him with. So, so I guess then, how many, how much variety is there to it? Because a ton, actually. There's, there's obviously edged. There's probably like bash or whatever. There's it would be edge, for blunt, blunt, and piercing. Okay, and yep. is, is that just those three? Just those three for that type. And then under physical, you have, you know like what? Flame. Here, like I'm gonna first hit him in the head. Her. Ah. Bam! Take that. Ah. He's yeah. Angry. We, All we right. can even like kind of just fight them as we're talking about this stuff too since it's so early i doubt we have a ton oh it's not let me look okay you know what when i can look at my equipment and stuff like that okay wait boom here we go all right every weapon has this so Ooh. uh you'll see that <laughs> so this is why you were like let's play a numbers heavy game yes <laughs> <laughs> all right so the basic type is what kind of type of, of damage it deals um if you'll notice over here, every weapon has a blade and then they have a hilt. Oh, wow. Okay. As basically, I mean, blade and hilt are probably not the best terms they could have used, but that's what they call them. So, <laughs> so the scimitar is, is the blade and the short hilt is is its hilt. Um, and the hilt hmm. determines what type, of what, uh, what type of damage you're going to, I guess, deal. So a scimitar is an edge weapon. So if you look up here, it says that the edge has a four piercing one of them blunt of zero. So mm -hmm. obviously... When I attach a blade to this, I want to make sure it's a good edged weapon. Because so it, I'm taking advantage of that four rather than a one or two. Okay, so you're basically able to customize your, your weapons. Yes. So much. Man. So I, yeah, this gets complicated quick. It's it's it, definitely one of those games too where I feel like a lot of players would look at it and be like, There's so many numbers. I don't yeah, I don't even if, want to get into this because if you don't get into it, you can't win. <laughs> yeah. It's as simple as that. But that's so, good. That's I think that's important. That's yeah. that like right there. That kind of defines this game because if they had all these numbers and players could just be like, eh, <laughs> be like this is Maze Effect. I don't need to care about the numbers. Oh, I don't just shoot about them. this at all. Yeah. It'd be like, why have all these numbers? Then? It's it, it will determine whether you, when you attack something you deal one damage or fifty damage. That is how important it is. Mm. So. Yeah, ultimately, yeah, you have this, and then you have the dip, the class, what kind of, like, right now I'm hitting a dragon, so this weapon has a minus one against dragon, that's very bad, when the numbers could range anywhere from minus 100 to plus 100. Minus one, pretty bad. Uh, and then the affinity, so right now it's a physical weapon, but if, whoa, ooh, I messed up there. Uh, but if it was, like, on, if it had more earth, then it would be an earth weapon, and when <laughs> I hit them, I would use the earth value instead. So it's kind of weird stuff like so that. So it chooses to show you what's statistically best. Okay, that, yep. I like that. That makes it a lot clearer in the UI. Like, I guess it, it it's less cumbersome for the player in a system yeah. that's already super cumbersome. <laughs> Precisely. They, they give you something. So obviously I found his weak point, which is the neck. Don't I mean, it is a thing with right all the neck. arrows in it. Yeah. Which is kind of a nice visual clue. I don't know if they intended it for it to work that way, but I don't know. I mean, as a player, I feel like that kind of makes sense to me. Especially, too, I, I feel like I'd look at a dragon and be like, oh, it has a lot of scales. It's probably impenetrable anywhere except for, I don't know, it's you know, underbelly. The, the soft spot. <laughs> we still have the credits because this is, this is still a very long tutorial. opening. Yeah. Although we, we were talking about this off camera, how it's interesting how they kind of integrated the credits in, in sort of the tutorial and... And the, the like opening, opening scene cinematics, all together. yeah, with with the actual gameplay, um, which is really nice. Uh, this was kind of ahead of its time in that way. Yeah, not many games did that, and if they did, it didn't necessarily pan out. But like, they <laughs> usually do pretty it clunky. They show you that at the end of the day, the manor's no longer on fire. Yay! We didn't technically do that. That was somebody else. <laughs> we won. 
Sort of. We killed a dragon that disappeared, so there's no proof that a dragon even existed. What were we even doing here? <laughs> so, um, in the beginning of this, there are, um, if, like, we had Le Monde. That's Le where we're going. Monde. Oh, okay. Um, so the very beginning, they have uh, some characters talking, uh, like, it, the opening cutscene, if you don't, you know, press the start or continue button. The, uh, the little trailers and they they show these characters talking that's where you're talking about the old man and it basically gives you some narrative that for the first time I played this game I played hours and hours without ever seeing that opening scene and I didn't realize how important the main character was or how important some of the other characters were oh. like they're like we're Sydney we got to find Sydney you don't find out who he is for like a little while and you only get hints from that opening scene. That's that's really interesting too because usually opening scenes, especially from this era of games and like all games before it really, those opening scenes were supposed to be like a commercial for the game almost. It's mm -hmm. like, this is the selling point. Look how awesome this game is going to be. And instead they chose to make it part of the story, which that's kind of rare. I, maybe not as rare for JRPGs. I don't. I can't think of any others that really yeah. from this generation that did that, but that's cool. Yeah, I, they, they I imagine, cared a lot about their narrative for this game. I, I imagine a lot of players had your experience, though, where they totally missed it. Where they just, unless they were so excited to play Vagrant Story, where they're like, I need to watch every little bit that I can. Which, I had some games back when I was a kid <laughs> that I did that. Yeah. Uh, so the knights who came were not the king's men, but the cardinals in fighting already. Knights of the Cross, led by Guildenstern, my lord. Is this, is this Crimson mean? Blade in direct service to the Cardinal? I'm not really sure. <laughs> it's so hard to see some of these characters. So this is the Duke. This is the Duke whose manor was just attacked, but obviously okay. he wasn't there. Were we trying to kill him, or do we know yet? We were just trying to find out why a cult was attacking his mansion. Ah. So those people, Sydney and everybody, he controls a cult. Oh, so we were actually protecting this duke, uh, in a way. In a way. Like, if, if the duke were there, we would have protected him. But since he wasn't there, it m merely became a matter of uh, find out why somebody's attacking the duke's manor. Mm. Because we don't work for the duke. We work for the king's guard. But we're basically the assassins of the king's guard, is gotcha. the best way to put it. Gildenstern led his men toward Le Monde in pursuit of Sydney. I see. Send one of your men... In the armor of these holy knights, set fire to the manor. Fire, my liege. <laughs> the fool Sidney used his wyvern, wyvern, <laughs> wyvern, wyvern. <laughs> he can't have witnesses telling the world now, can we? So that manor that I'm pretty sure that we just like saved from being set on fire. I think he's just gonna burn it down. I'm pretty sure that's his manor. So kind of funny. Douchebag. <laughs> but the hostages, your family. Irrelevant. Burn it. Burn it to the ground. <laughs> I will be the only one. There can only be one. <laughs> what of the Parliament? The VKP, Valendia Knights of the Peace, have formed a squad <laughs> to deal with the, <laughs> the felons. Thank you for that game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, I was playing this earlier I, and somebody else saw that and you were laughing at it too. Like I, But I hate abbreviations so much. This is getting outside of GDPG because this is my, like, one, like, biggest thing that pisses me off at my day job. It's like, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Because well, I would have been like, what's VKB? What's VKB? I don't know. Well, this you're going to see I'll it for the rest out. of the game. You're going to see it for the rest of the game. So, you so this remember, is important. You better remember this one time because that's all you're going to see of it. Plenty of Nights of Peace. Of the Peace. Kind of strange. The Risk Breakers. Those meddling fools. Your will, my lord. Leomond is yours. Let no one out of the town. You can deal with Sydney and the blades there. And Parliament? I'll deal with those watchdogs. They won't trouble you further. And the young lord Joshua? The little boy that was taken. Joshua? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> my, light, my soul. What shall befall him? As you wish, my lord. Oh, look, we can see them in the background. Look at, oh, oh man. narrative, yeah. Man, this oh, is this like little some kind of vagrant taken. story or something. <laughs> story about a vagrant, rotten weather, even if the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I, I didn't, so I missn't the last word. So dramatic. It's just drama. 
11.42 a.m. I don't know why they bother with the time. Oh, that guy's dead. That person's dead. They're all dead. Things are going well. Leman is an old town with a history of over 2,000 years. Its walls have seen many battles. They are stronger than the mightiest forts of Valendia. And as the sun wheels through the sky, the beauty of their shifting colors surpasses that of any palace. Thanks. The grand cathedral that towers over this town is a symbol of Le Mans indomitable spirit and the holy ground of the devout... I I Locus. Lo oh, I thought that was an I. Locus yeah. priesthood. As its height, Le Mans was a thriving community more than 5,000 people strong. 25 years ago, a great earthquake brought that chapter in Le Mans. And people died, I guess. Le Mans! That part is weird and I felt was just like... Because everything else was like, we're going to tell everything through dialogue and scenery. We ran out of time. Let's just give them a t wall of text. <laughs> uh, you're in Le Mans. All right, uh, carry on. Uh, there was an earthquake. Fuck. <laughs> well. Oh, that's she's the Inquisitor that was sent to deal, to find people and figure out what's going mm. on. That's another thing that if we had watched the opening scene, we would have realized. Ah, okay. So, yeah. The two Sentinels are dead. Murdered. Hmm. Clothing in this game. It's the only way in. There's a great cr crevasse preventing entry above ground. And from the sea? Nay, sunken reefs that rose during the earthquake form a gauntlet of whirlpools. Too dangerous. I wish that you could see the the whirlpools, just know, like right? like eight. J all of it. Just one giant whirlpool. I mean, that's probably a static image in the background, but <laughs> yep. it'd still be pretty fun. Do you know we sent agents in thinking those ruins were the Mullenkamp base? Mullenkamp? Mullenkamp is the name of the no returned. Ah, okay. Although it's named after a guy who was named Mullenkamp. Mullenkamp, not on account of the whirlpools, I'd wager. Surely it was the men who killed them. How was it down there? <laughs> Come down and see for yourself. <laughs> Man, he's such a tough hero. Uh, this guy's this guy's so cool. <laughs> uh. According to the survivors, our comrade agent Riot headed down for Le Mans before noon. Of course, the reports were vague, and we cannot deny the possibility of inaccuracies. Yet, given that there is only one path to infiltrate Le Mans, this office believes the reports to be valid. So this is somebody telling this past story that okay. has already happened. Interesting. And at the end mm. of the story, basically what it leads you to believe is at the beginning of it is whatever transpired in Leomond, nobody knows what happened to Ashley Riot. Oh, okay. So you were seeing what actually happened to Ashley Riot. What's this? What's That's what I'm here to find out. Oh. Yeah. Does seem well fortified for a while in solar. Oh, Le Mans is win wineries, wineries once vied with the best of Valendia. Since they went out of production, the remaining vintages sell for a premium. Out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> consider them yours. You plan to go alone? I'm a risk breaker. <laughs> I'm an agent with no combat experience. You just be oh, a liability. An agent. <laughs> We <laughs> fuck you too. Tell me you know of this small camp in the Sydney. Sydney Lazarad is the leader of the religious cult Mullenkamp. His real name and age are unknown. One of many self styled prophets of the apocalypse. So I would call a missionary commit such a crime. I do not know what the Cardinal thinks, but the VKP believes he is no prophet. Indeed, he is in dark alliance with Duke Barbadora, who controls Parliament from behind the scenes. Bardor... That cult is but a front. Perhaps the incident is a sign of some falling out between the two? Or merely another one of the Cardinal's witch hunters. There are many would-be prophets in the land these days, but Sydney is... Dot, 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 different. His prophecies ring true, and those enraptured by the way... We human, he he hums. hums. Uh, sometimes this <laughs> the, text, this text is a little pixelated. A little much, yeah. <laughs> uh, as though they were simple ballads. 
all say the same. He is a miracle. In any case, he has a strange power. He can guess the past of those he meets. He can even read hearts. He, they say his charisma is such that his followers offer both body and soul to him. He can even read your hit points. Sounds like you're quite taken with him. <laughs> I wish that's how he actually left. I'm <laughs> like walking backward. Like the, the only door. voiceover in the game, too. <laughs> or HQ if I'm not returned. Oh. Oh. And they are informed. Dang. God and he closes speak. the door behind him again. <laughs> Later. Just dead bodies all over the place. Yeah. Not to foreshadow too much, but you start to learn to not trust bodies anymore. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> well, she's added to the pile. <laughs> <laughs> we sent men to monitor the abandoned mine shaft that leads to Le Monde. All were found dead. At this entrance, other bodies were found. Two knights and the Cardinal Crimson Blades. Our men were murdered with swords, but knights the knights' wounds show they died by their own hands. At present, we have taken the bodies into our custody, and our specialists are continuing the examination. Excerpt from blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's from an investigation report. Well, I think that's all we have for this episode. I don't know if we can pause during cutscenes. I think we're just about done here. Hurry up. Come on, I believe. We're actually uh, over time. Line. We're quite a bit over. Oh, we found the vintage oh, yeah, wine! Yeah, we found the vintage wine! We're <laughs> gonna be rich! <laughs> Wouldn't it be hilarious? We'd be like, I got the wine! Out! We'd be like, take the wine or continue your journey. you like, take the wine? All right! <laughs> you carry on the rest of your days merrily. <laughs> Song of Seven type style ending. Yep, like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's stop there before the. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a good spot to stop. Um, I think that this is a good episode to talk about the narrative. Yes. So far. I mean, we can even talk about how the narrative was infused into the tutorial, which was infused into the gameplay. Um, since that was really the, the most, like, game we saw out of this episode. Um, or, or we can simple, even talk about how there actually, is a lot of Actually, simple question with the narrative. Uh, so far, what have you enjoyed that they did with the narrative? Hmm. And how did you feel how they broke up the narrative? And when I say that, I mean how they showed cutscene certain dialogue, imagery, and scenery, and then they had the wall of text to just explain backstory. How did you feel? What do you think was the weakest, like, you know... Weakest part of this whole yeah. narrative experience so, so far? So I guess the ultimate question is weakest and strongest part of the narrative. Those are my favorite kinds of questions. Yeah. Boom, that's all. That's all I got. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to vote on what you want to see next, whether it's more Vagrant Story or one of the other two games up here. And check out our social stuff, our Facebook page or Twitter, where we post some fun stuff from time to time. Bye. Bye, everybody. Mm.